Welcome everybody. This is Teva DRC. This is an apostolic ministry to Christian leaders. Anyone else is listening? That's fine. Welcome. Uh, this is for all colors, all parts of the faith, for you to selectively opt in, out, opt out, whatever you feel. I am not over you. The woman is not over you. She is beside you. A Galatians 1, 1 and 2, collaborating in the field like Paul, offering a another view. And we submit it as Sela, not as autocratic dogma, because there's too much of that. We are not against Levitical patriarchy leaders, but we do say that the wear and tear on this one person and individual is symbolic of what goes on with mega thousands or at least mega hundreds. Uh, the story is I was raised by patient and calm Billy Graham type Baptists, not Bible thumpers, not fundamentalist fun. Mother had an infusion of, of, of Presbyterian. Uh, and so they were very educated Bible scholars. And my father was a seminary graduate from the Louisville, Kentucky seminary and was officially a graduate. And he was one that even though he's calm, he did not believe in speaking in tongues because he'd been trained that the book of Acts had quit. And later on, when the charismatic renewal came and I met the Holy Spirit, I was, you know, on fire for the Lord in college, the Jesus people movement on up. Uh, I had met the Holy Spirit in college at an off campus praise and worship back in the day. And then later, when my mother got ill, she and my sister in Norfolk, Virginia, and my family, she found a charismatic prayer group that was at a Catholic Living Waters in Norfolk, Virginia back then. And my father went, and even though everybody's very quiet and gentle in our family, he decided that wasn't for him. So when I see people now bossing and shaming and reviling fellow Christians who are choosing not to go for the Holy Spirit, but come out against them, I guess you call them cessationists, hey, why? We're supposed to have harmony. I look back at my dad. I guess you could say my dad wasn't a Bible thumper. He wasn't an autocrat, an authoritarian. He was a servant leader, not a people pleaser, but not an LP. And I can tell the difference that, yay, hey, it's your choice. We're cross body unity. We're not. We have purposely been sent by the Lord to trailblaze a movement for people to get a point of view that if you need some of it or all of it, that's fine. It's supposed to be servant leader, quiet. For the common person to the mega to the micro all colors if you need it and you will know if you need it by the holy spirit so i'm not dogmatic but i'm very passionate now because i had never been around dogma i had never read around, around people who witch watch me read my mind never spoke to me and then told everybody i was this that and the other that's lp so because it's so big i'm going to tell you my story all right along the journey after i had met the lord in my father's revival, his friend was preaching at nine years old, rededicated my life with Billy Graham at 12, at 18, met the Jesus, you know, a Jesus person off, off uh, you know, before I went to college and finally got it. I love Jesus. It's some of this religious church I don't like, not my family or anybody, the Christian. I just don't like being cooped up. So that's with me still to be careful. And also as a holy fear of the Lord brought up, non-denominate you know sort of like they they didn't care what your pedigree they were called to be baptist back then but you know my the flavor i got was like if god needs you at a certain place or a certain kind you just go there make sure they're safe they're pure in heart they have a good doctrine they know the bible they know the lord and then that is not my business this is supposed to be like a family so we're trying to capture that community the pauline community that you can have your choice your flavor your spin on the doctrine your energy or lack thereof and that is not going to be my i'm not entitled i don't feel it's fair to say that only one person would tell you far off people how to act and do you got to hear god this is a god word but it's for you to evaluate and be like paul be a noble berean See if it's really matching up with Scripture, not under the law, but in the Old Testament, but not under the law. Old Testament now is stone throwing, accusing, I gotcha, that tone of the Pharisee LP. All right. Also, Paul, before he got saved, when he was the Saul spirit. All right. So, in looking back, in hindsight, I was graduated. I had healthy two parent love, not dysfunction. 
uh, my strong will grandmother on my dad's side, she would come. And I remember my mom uh, was a great mom. She was strong will too. So that was the only thing, but nobody fought, nobody, you know, accused, but I had a quality by grace by grace so I could tell a difference later when I got around certain kind of Christians in leadership that needed therapy or that needed that had been raised cruelly or just rough and didn't know yet how to treat all kinds of people fairly so when I was 16 and I met the Lord 17 before and I made my heart choice to follow Jesus the Messiah I thought I'm gonna follow you in college when I was a Jesus person with my long hair and everything a Bible reader I told the Lord this. I said, Lord, 18, I don't know exactly what you want me to do or be. I didn't have any clue. And so I said, whatever you want me to do or be, just let me know. I'll give you 20, I'll follow you 24, seven, 365 cents. And I have ever since I had no clue. I never wanted to do, cared to do this. I didn't care to be a woman speaker, preacher, pastor, apostle, all these five full minutes. I didn't know about it, but I didn't, I also thought, it wasn't attractive to me. Mom was the pastor's wife. Dad was the pastor. It's always been head of home. Ephesians 521 with me. And that's how I believe it anyway. But if God needs you, you do what he says. Because it's that bad. It's that important. People are not going to make it. Some of these leaders may not make it. I might. I'm, we're all watching out every day. All right. So when I was 16, uh, 18, I made a commitment to follow the Lord despite that you know and so I did and later on I'd, I I was led by the spirit you know my family it wasn't weird they were led by the Bible but they and believed in the Bible God's holy word fear of the Lord but they didn't have this thing they were like led by the inward witness and they didn't speak in tongues nobody they just knew the Lord he'd say do that don't that so it's not foreign to me my parents when I was 14 or 13 they said Tavo we feel that the Lord wants us to leave this area where dad had been the pastor and they taught school and move somewhere else. So we, by the Holy Spirit, were led to look around the area, but nobody spoke in tongues like many people do this. All right. So then they realized it wasn't the central Virginia area. We moved to Norfolk, Virginia Beach. Thank God. It transformed my life. I'm very cosmopolitan. All right. Jumping ahead, I was led to go to college, a servant leader thought, and um, later when the Holy Spirit movements began, Jesus people like Charismatic Renewal is, in my part, you know, on the East Coast, it wasn't the top people, but it was like we got it by the Holy Spirit, you know, the winds of doctrine, which were pleasant. Everything was servant leader, it wasn't carnal, it was just, it was peaceful, peaceful, led of the Lord, happy, you know, happier. Not commercial that's the issue later when I was 24 and I'd been around town in ministry I was always like a witness and everything and joined um, help pray and revival cross by the unity style it wouldn't call that racial division all that in the central Virginia area the Lord called me one day when I was 24 in a Presbyterian church that was half charismatic renewal and half not and I heard the Lord say at 24 in 1976, he said, Tavo, I want you to study the body of Christ. It'll be all colors, all styles, tongue talking and not. It'll be all colors. And then one day I'm going to have you build bridges of understanding between the different parts of my body. He said, I want you to know their doctrines, their lifestyles. I want you to know their pet peeves, red flag, birds, words. And that's how it started. It wasn't till later into the 90s when celebrities started. And I was there in my own ministry as well and a family and all that stuff. All right, along the way, and I'm gonna to have to make another part about this. All right, there was nothing like we have today. Nothing that would trigger me to be this strong. Nothing would like, wow, what are we gonna make it as a church, the church, you know? So I was on fire for the Lord as my grandmother would call it back then. Boo, my grandmother. But I didn't have any reason to exhort to correct till later. And the Lord had told me along the way in the late 90s when the doctrine started to get affected, TV ministry affected. I'll tell you more about that another time. All right. He said, if you see something that hurts people three times or more in different places, the same thing, that is my sign. I'm calling you to teach on it because I see a lot more of it because I don't want to hurt people when they show up to worship the Lord at Hebrews 10:25 fellowship or hurt my good name. That's why I do this, because this is giant. The stuff we're mentioning today is enormous. 